In this video, we're going to take a graphical look at something that is essential to understand for the fundamentals of engineering exam. That's called depreciation. As you know from uh, our posts on the buying or leasing a new car, tangible assets, also called hard assets, things like equipment, machinery, vehicles, we purchase them at one price, but then they lose value over time. These are called depreciating assets. Ultimately, they arrive at some value at which they're no longer useful. That doesn't mean that they don't have market value, but this time axis has some terminus which we would say that's the end of the life of the good. At some point, your car is no longer economical to operate or it just doesn't work. That value down here, here's the purchase price, that value down here is called the residual value or also salvage value. Now we use the term residual value when we were talking about a lease because at the end of the lease, let's say this is 48 months, which is the example that we were giving, the residual value was actually a term that we used for the agreed upon price at which the driver could purchase the vehicle from the leasing company. So residual value is used in more than just one respect. It is recognized as the uh, value of something at the end, but it's uh, more accurate if you're going to use the good all the way to the end of its life to talk about salvage value. So here, this is where the equipment or the vehicle no longer operates and it can be sold. It still has some value, but it can only be sold for scrap or parts or something else. Now the trip between here, the initial value of good, and the ending value of the good at whatever time this is, is usually, if we were to accurately portray the market value, an approximation of exponential decay. It declines very rapidly at first, but as the good loses value, the rate of decline or the rate of loss tends to decelerate. That's not the way that people approximate depreciation on their books. The most common way of doing it is called straight line. And that's because drawing a straight line between two points is computationally the simplest. So you can understand that if this is a good with a lifetime of 10 years, I just changed from months to years now, and it depreciates from P to what we'll call S down here, the salvage value, over that period of 10 years, we could compute the book value. Book value is not the same as market value. Book value is according to this approximation, this straight line depreciation. But we could compute the book value in any year if we just knew how rapidly the good depreciates. So the slope of any straight line is the rise over the run, and we can compute this slope by saying it's P minus S over the number of years. In this case, it's 10. So if I were going to generalize, I would say over the lifetime. In straight line depreciation, the amount of depreciation in any given year is this equation, P minus S over the lifetime. That's the slope of the line. And so the book value in four years would be, here's book value, straight line, would be equal to P, this is our starting place, minus t, for just example, four years, right? So we put four in there. p minus s over, let me just say l to the t. This is lifetime. So now we can get the book value in every, any given year, and as we know, the depreciation is constant. But this is not a good approximation of market value. Because depreciation is an expense on which businesses do not have to pay taxes, if they straight line depreciate, they'll have less expense than the market value would justify. Less expense means paying more taxes. The cash flow diagram 
for depreciation to be a straight line would involve paying your taxes earlier than if you could increase your expenses in the early years going something closer to market value. So there's another method of depreciation. As a matter of fact, there's a multitude of methods, but this one I'm going to show you is called sum of the year's digits. And it doesn't really have a, a mathematical basis. It just is convenient because we don't have to do complicated exponential scientific calculator math, it's convenient. You add up all of the digits and you put those in the denominator. If you want to know the depreciation in the first year, then you would say you take the largest of these 10 and say, aha, in some of the year's digits, first year depreciation is given by this fraction multiplied by P minus S. So you can see when we compute the book value we start with the initial value, we take the years, and then we have this fraction. So there's a new way now, of the, in this case the fraction was uh, 1 over LT, right? But there's a new way now of determining what that fraction should be. In some of the years digits, this is the depreciation in the first year, that goes in the numerator, for the second year, and you're going to see the pattern. The third year, the result is a closer approximation of the market value, the curve. By the last year, of course, we have, this is the final year, would be one in the numerator, all of this added up in the denominator, and the slope of that line is going to be very close to zero. Well, it depends upon how many years, but it's going to be much flatter than it is in the first year. As a matter of fact, the first year will be 10 times, in this example, 10 times as steep as the last year. So some of the year's digits gives us an approximation of a curve. There's also the modified accelerated cost recovery system, the double declining balance system. All of these methods are intended to find some approximation of this curve of linear depreciation that the Internal Revenue Service will allow so that businesses can avoid paying taxes too soon. The more accelerated the depreciation, the more deferred the tax payments. This is why part of the stimulus program was a policy that allowed small businesses to expense their capital improvements all in one year. Now that um, expired at the end of 2011 and sure enough, so small businesses have made a uh, purchase of tangible assets. These are durable goods that intended to last a long time. That, that made uh, purchases of tangible assets in 2011 were allowed to an appreciation curve like this. Boom! as aggressive, as accelerated as it can possibly be, they uh, depreciated the entire amount in the first year. Well, I suppose technically it might be like this. One. This created a lower tax bill in the first year, higher tax bills in out years, but as we know from our uh, study of time preference of money, we'd much rather defer taxes than pay them up front. This is why it was part of the stimulus package. Because if you can defer the taxes on a purchase, you'll make the purchase sooner and that will help the economy. Sure enough, in January 2012, this uh, incentive expired. People had to go back to the regular uh, depreciation schedules and durable goods orders dropped correspondingly.